Hello everyone, welcome to a very special edition of Build Your Future with Bifim. I'm joined by an important guest, the CEO of Bifim, Meneo Bukhatsu. Now, a few days ago, I asked her to send a couple of questions regarding unit trusts. Now, through this discussion with her, we will help you better understand what they are, the benefits, and of course, the process of applying. Thank you so much, Mabu Khatsu, for joining us on Build Your Future with Biffin. As I've already said, when we talk about investing, when we talk about money, when we talk about unit trusts, but that, it's, it's intimidating and sometimes even boring. <laughs> and I elitist, and elitist, you know. But now we want to have this conversation with you so you simplify investing specifically in unit trusts. Now, I shared your questions with Mabuhatsu and she's here to unpack unit trusts with the film for us. Thank you, Mabuhatsu. <laughs> yeah, welcome, Marang. And let me start by saying that we are very excited and happy to have you on board. We believe that this partnership will bear fruit for Bifim, but most importantly, for the people out there. Because we believe that unit trust, saving, investing is a very important thing that each and every one of us must do. And how about a might? Yes. Then we don't know what to do with it exactly. all the time. So in simple terms, Mabuhatsu, what are unit trusts? Unit trusts, I think there are a number of explanations that we can give, but we say that it's collective investment. So what we really mean here is that you've got different uh, investors or many investors where we pull their money together. And these investors have got similar objectives. They've got similar risk appetites. So we pull this money together and we invest this money in different funds or unit trust funds, you know, with different asset classes, you know, your shares, bonds, fixed deposit properties etc and we do this for the for the benefit of all the the, the investors there unit trusts uh, provide a very easy and affordable access to financial markets with unit trust it doesn't matter whether you are a seasoned investor or you are a first time investor you are able to use unit trust to save and invest so i think unit trusts are very good for each one of us like i've said yeah. to invest and to save through unit trust so, can I 200 bula? I'm a fresh graduate or a young professional. Can I 500 there? Back to the issue of what unit trusts are. I give that to Bifim, and then Bifim will take the money and say, okay, here are um, these specific financial assets. It's only the fixed deposits, the shares, the bonds. When into those financial assets, both locally and offshore. So, that's how unit trusts work. And then every month, get that working like in 200, they will get months, get months, get months. The sooner I start, the more money I will make from this investment, right? But also the longer I stay invested. Perfect. Because there's always confusion. You're not going to work. You're going to get 200, they will get And then 20 years later, am I going to find 500,000? How much am I going to find? So I think I like this discussion because people really don't understand what is, what is the actual process from start to end. Okay. 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 <laughs> okay. I see what you mean there, Marang. Um, one of the things that you say about a unit trust is that there are different types, right? And when you say there are different types, we've got there are different uh, unit trust funds. At the moment at BFM, we've got about five uh, unit trust funds. And uh, they're all unit trust, it's all collective investments. We are pulling uh, money from different investors, like I've already mentioned. But one of the things that we look at here is what we call risk appetite. Yes. I risk again we all know what a risk is the way. Risk but the hell talks about uh, the probability or the possibility or chances. I can you guys on that about the chances. Yes. Chances <laughs> of, 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 of loss. And in this instance, we are talking about financial loss. Megan Hapelos also not forget that when you talk about the other risk, it can also be big gains. Yes. Right? So with regards to unit trusts, uh, they are different funds that cater for different risk appetites. So, but uh, there are those who are risk averse and they would want a low risk yes. and low return uh, uh, fund. I get really see risk return. Yes. A yes. type of matrix. And it says that the lower the risk, uh, the lower the return. The higher the risk, the higher the return. So we've got different uh, unit trust funds that cater for different risk appetite. And there's a number of things that you need to consider. There is also, apart from risk appetite, age. 
Yes. Somebody like me, my brother who's close to retirement, I'll say I'll go for low risk, low return, or moderate risk. Somebody like you, Marang. Okay. And also maybe if you are in, uh, investing for, what's the name Nami? of your daughter? If you're investing for Nami, I'll say, you know what, when it comes to Nami, go for it. Yes. Go for it. You can take the, the you know, your high risk uh, type of investment. And the reason for doing that is that high risk means there is high volatility. And volatility right up and down. Can I get it? up and down it can go down it can also go up now the reason why you do that for nani because nani munyanya you can invest for nani for 20 years you know until ali radio and there what it means is that it's got the chance and the opportunity to recover from the volatility that will be that will be happening over the years so what you're saying is I get to net 200. I could get the cut up after two weeks, two months, and we get to send 200 to like about 2000. Exactly, exactly. You know, the way that our unit trusts are, we've got access uh, to the funds. You can come and get your 200 pula, and if you have a year, but we say, you know what, you want to save, save it, buy later. You remember we used to use that word. I don't hear it often nowadays. I don't know why. Yes. And you know, at BFM, we've made it very easy for a lot of people. We are starting with 200 pula. You must also remember that we say 200 pula. It doesn't mean that we want to limit you to 200 pula. 200 pula, we just say so that we can accommodate as many people as possible uh, with different uh, levels of money. Look at for the year. We start with 200 and we encourage people to sign a stop orders or debit orders so that every month there's something that you are putting aside. The other, how on excuse, the other benefit you are doing your monthly stop order, it also does not stop you from bringing in 1,000 pula or 500 pula or 20,000 pula, almost every maybe you, you, you paid a bonus at work, maybe somebody has gifted you money, you just bring it. That is how flexible our unit trust are. And the other thing, in order to help people, because we believe that a financial discipline, we all want to be disciplined, but it's not always an easy thing. So at BFM, we said, you know what, let's try and help our clients. The other thing is that our clients had already given us feedback to say that, you know what, is access to unit trust. I want to be more disciplined. That is why uh, we then launched Early Toto and Yamasa. These ones have a seven-year locking period. You start today, and we also say that make sure that there is a stop order. So you start today with your stop order for seven years, we are not giving you access to that money. It is to help you. It is to help you with the discipline. Hmm. Yes, Very so interesting. that is how flexible and that is how customer centric we are at BFM. We try to listen to our customers. We try to do what we believe will help our customers uh, oh, benefit my. more. Thank you so much, Mabuhatsu. What an insightful conversation. Next episode, we continue our conversations about unit trusts with Mabuhatsu. See ya! Mwah.